it all started last year. I had this pain in my tooth because, you know, last year I was fine. My knee was fine, my calf was fine, my shoulder was fine. I was in pretty good nick. Then I had this pain in my tooth and I went to the dentist, you know, as you do. Open my mouth, which is key. Obviously, you have to, you have to be asked. <laughs> you don't just walk in, ha? Huh? <laughs> so I sat in the chair and he's like, he looked at my mouth. He's like, you know what? You've got a rotting wisdom tooth. I've got to take it out. I've got to take it out, it's rotting. And I didn't really mind. I didn't even know I had wisdom teeth, to be honest. I know that my wife's had them out, so I'm like, yeah, fine, whatever you like. Also, there's a TV there, I was watching this morning, it's right in my face, I was watching Philip Schofield chatting away. I was like, yeah, go for your life. So he just got to work, and I just lay there, and I, I lay there for a while, I don't know, maybe an hour, maybe more than an hour. And I thought, I've been here ages. So I flicked my eyes over, you know, to see if the dentist was okay, and he wasn't, oh my God, was quite stressed. Sort of sweat coming off his forehead, he was straining like this. <laughs> So I tried to ask him if it was okay, which is hard when your mouth is completely numb and he had, like, equipment in it. Came out as one sort of sound. Ah! Ah! Just one noise. Like a Northern Irishman saying mirror. That's an odd moment. Mirror. I was looking in the mirror. They're not even in the dentist. I don't know what's going on there. I was like, ah! And he pulled back and he went, no, 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 I'm not okay. I'm not okay at all. I thought it was something personal. I was like, oh my God. Tell me what the matter is. You poor thing. He said, I've been a dentist for 30 years. Congratulations, that's excellent. That's excellent for real. Well, well done. And I've never not been able to get somebody's tooth out. I can't get your tooth out. It's stuck. But okay, look, you need to calm yourself down. <laughs> I didn't know that. Okay, I'm not in any pain whatsoever. I've got nowhere to be. I'm watching this morning. I'm absolutely completely fine. Go away, have a cup of tea, chill out, come back, try again. I believe in you. <laughs> he said, the reason you don't feel any pain is I've numbed your mouth, okay? Look, and he passed me a mirror. I am not going to lie to you. Till the day I die. I will never forget the image that greeted me in the reflection, okay? This side of my face was literally twice the size of this side. There was bruising, I hadn't even noticed. My bib was covered in blood already, I didn't even see it. There was blood dripping out the side of my face like a sort of vampire. My eye was sort of closing. I was like, what the fuck are you done to <laughs> So that's what I was trying to tell you. We've got to get you out of here. I've got to get you to a hospital. Follow me! And he ran out of the room. I just followed on behind him. Hello, excuse me, hello. I have to say, I felt particularly sorry. The poor people in the waiting room, you know, they're sitting there with the, with the fish tank, reading old magazines, reassuring their children everything was going to be fine at the dentist visit. I come out with bruising, blood all over my bib, blood coming out the side of my mouth. Excuse me. Has anybody seen the dentist? They were like, okay, Jules, and you were right. Come with mummy. Come on, come with mummy now. Come on. I turned around to that idiot on reception. There's some woman there. She's like, would you like to book an appointment with the hygienist? The hygienist? I need a fucking plastic surgeon. Where's my dentist going? I look out the door. This idiot is in his car. He's in his car with the door open. He's still got his gloves on. He's going, get in. Get in. Are you serious? Just get in. So I get in the car with this man. He starts hurtling through the streets. Literally 10 minutes earlier, I was in the dentist chair in relative comfort watching this morning. Now we're driving through traffic. He's hooting and swearing. My wife actually called me up on the phone. Hello? Hello? Hello, darling. You still at the dentist? I'm with the dentist. <laughs> you mean you're at the dentist? I'm not at dentist. I'm with dentist. <laughs> you mean you're at the dentist? No, I'm not at the dentist. I'm with the dentist. Why are you being so pedantic? I'm not being... Pum, bum, bum. <laughs> I'm in the car. Oh, you're on your way home? I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> well, what is wrong with you? The dentist is riding. <laughs> the dentist is riding. Oh, he's writing. He's writing. The dentist is writing. The dentist is rising. The dentist is writing. The dentist is writhing. I'll call you later. 
You're calling a waiter? You're having lunch with the dentist? Leave it! Finally, we show up at this door. He's like, you see that door? I'm like, yeah. Go in there, OK? That's a hospital. They're going to treat you. You're going to be fine. They know to expect you. Just tell them your name. Everything's going to be fine. Get out. Come on, get out! So I get out to this guy. He just drives off. He leaves me. I'm now standing on the pavement, right? I've still got the bib on, the blood-soaked bib. I'm standing there. I saw my reflection in the glass. I have to. I looked horrific. I was worried I was going to startle the receptionist, so I came in at my best angle. <laughs> Hello, sir, can I help you? Yes, I was wondering... <laughs> She's like, oh, my God! Oh, my God! Have you been attacked? So, no, I haven't been attacked. I don't go out in the bib expecting a thought. I haven't been attacked so many times, I now wear absorbent clothing. <laughs> Apparently, you're expecting me. <laughs> so, um, OK, sir, can I take your name, please? Now, the problem is, and you'll know this if you're on a local anaesthetic, you can't move your lips. I had no control of my lips, and you need that to do certain letters of the alphabet. The M, for example, greatly requires lip work. <laughs> M, and I couldn't do I need that to identify myself. So she's like, can I take your name, please? Yes. I have Akum Nakin Akul Akinkaka. <laughs> oh, Akul Akinkaka. <laughs> Akul Akinkaka. Oh, oh, what's my lip? Right, OK, I think the best thing for you to do is if you head down the corridor, take a seat in the waiting room, and we'll try to get to the bottom of this, OK? Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I was quite pissed off she didn't recognise me, OK? I was on quite a lot of television. I know that this side of my face was pretty much, you know, unrecognisable, but this side was fine. I tried to jog her memory as I went down the corridor. Unbelievable! <laughs> she never could look round. So we're getting to the waiting room now, and the anaesthetic starts to wear off. I feel a bit, you know... It hurts a bit now. I start making this sort of low, sort of E.T. type sound on my own in the corner. <laughs> I try people around. I, I try to be nice. I try to look at other people in there. <laughs> Thankfully, I think for everybody, the nurse came in quite quickly. Akul Akinkaka. <laughs> I didn't respond, I just sat there. <laughs> she came right up to my face. Excuse me. Uh? Are you Akul Akinkaka? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, what is your name? Akul <laughs> Akinkaka. <laughs> that is actually me. Sorry, chaps. <laughs> this is my real name, obviously, is Akul Akinkaka. <laughs> but here they know me as Akul Akinkaka. I'm a certain <laughs> So they take me up into this room, sort of private room, and she's really nice to me now. She's like, oh my god, you've had a terrible day, haven't you, sir? Like, I have. I had a real horrible day. Please, are you going to help me? She's like, yes, don't worry, don't panic at all. We do this all the time. We're going to give you a general anaesthetic. We're going to take your tooth out. Everything's going to be fine. If you just want to take all your clothes off and pop this hospital gown on, we'll take you straight through to surgery. For all my clothes off. You say, take all your clothes off, pop the gown, and we'll take you through. Why do I have to take all my clothes off? All the patients have to wear the hospital gown. That's, that's, that's hospital policy. Yes, but you don't seem to understand the situation. I've got a problem with my tooth, which is located in my lap. I don't have a tooth embedded in my arm. So can I wear my home clothes? But no. You'll know what it's like if you've been to hospital. They humiliate you for no reason at all. You have to put this sort of piece of shit, floral, thin gown on the wrong way round with your ass hanging out. I have to go into the loo with this gown, with my, literally my bare bottom hanging out of the back, and you put this on for no reason. It's why everyone in the hospital has their clothes on the right way round. You have to put it on like that. I'll come out. <laughs> Satisfied? So, yes, that's perfect. Fuck off, it's perfect. <laughs> I've got a tooth hanging out, and now I've got nubs on out. There's no reason 
Is this disgraceful? Is this fickle? Is this wrong? It's abhorrent. What on earth are you going to do to me? I'm to general aesthetic that requires access to my ass. I'm pretty. <laughs> there will be repercussions. There'll be what? Repercussions! <laughs> Don't take that tone with me, Mr. Akin Kaka. For the last time, <laughs> my name is Akin Kaka! <laughs> Now I have to follow this woman down the corridor, literally down the corridor. There's no way I'm going to walk down a hospital corridor with my arse just flapping away here. So people just happen to be behind me looking at my arse. No, that is not going to happen. So I go down the, I go down the wall like this. Unbelievable. There's no reason why I have to have a mama. Why have a mama? Somebody's actually doing the same thing towards me. All right, quickly, Evie! Thank you. <laughs> Finally, they lie me down on a hospital bed and I'm thrilled now because I'm, my arse is concealed. I'm happy. The anaesthetist comes in, a very serious, sort of quite old man. Hello. I'm the anaesthetist. I'm going to give you a general anaesthetic. I'm going to knock you out. I'm going to give you a small prick on your left arm. You're going to be knocked out immediately. You okay with that, Michael? My... <gasps> Michael. <laughs> That's my name. He says, yes, I know exactly who you are. My three daughters are big fans of yours. <gasps> oh, that's very kind. Thank you. Thank you. Then he put the needle in my arm, and he went, my wife and I not so keen, and put me out! <laughs> oh, the I was like, you mother... <laughs> I woke up, I don't know how many hours later, two or three hours later, I didn't know where I was. Sometimes I wake up at home in a deep sleep, and I don't know where I am. This was the deepest sleep I've ever had, it was a general anaesthetic. I woke up, it was in bed, it was bright, it was hot. I'd come out of the covers, you know when, you know when like in a heat wave you come out, you know? When your arse is like the highest point, you come out. With the duvet. You know when you're lying down, uh, at some stage during the night, the duvet sort of tucks in and you just sort of roll out like that. <laughs> so I wake up. And within moments, I feel this breeze coming in the back. <laughs> so I turn around to see my entire family standing there. <laughs> at which point my son said, pants down, you're the loser. 